all right so let's start so whatever we have done till now vectors and factors these were single dimensional right one row many columns and um, these stored single type of data set for example uh, we have only numeric or we have only character type data right now we'll start with matrices so matrices are two dimensional objects so it has both rows number of rows and number of columns the only thing which is same is that it also stores the same type of data so it does not have different data types you can only store numeric or you can only store um, characters or complex whatever it is so the data type remains the same for all the values just that now it is two dimensional dimensional you have number of rows and number of columns clear all right so now let's start with our coding So matrices are two dimensional collection of data of same data type, right? Now how we can create our first matrix? So I have cleaned my entire R. This is a script, clear console, dot area and the global environment. Okay. So now let me first create a vector. For example, I have a vector 1, 2, 12, right? So let's run V. So it's basically a vector with 12 values, right? Now I want to create a matrix out of this particular vector. So I will write mat1, which is my first matrix. The name of the function in order to create a matrix is matrix itself. And let's see in the help tab that what, what all different arguments we have for matrix function. Very first argument is the data. What data you want to input. So here my data is the vector data which I have which is V or you can write data equal to V. Next we have to specify the number of rows in the number of columns. So we will specify the number of rows that we want. Obviously you have to specify because it's a two dimensional object. So you will have to specify as to what dimension do you want for your matrix. So let's suppose I want number of rows as let's suppose 3. I want number of rows as 3. Alright. So if I have mentioned number of rows as 3, what will be my number of columns? In total, I have 12 elements. So in my entire matrix, I should have 12 elements. So 3 into 4 gives me 12. So if we have 3 rows, I will have 4 columns. By default, by default, R will give me 4 columns. So when I run this and you run mat1, it will by default give you 4 columns and 3 Clear? Clear? Okay. You can directly, instead of, instead of doing so much, you can directly write, you can directly write matrix V comma 3. By default, 3 will be taken as number of. You can also write matrix V comma 3 comma 4, where this 4 is number of columns number of columns clear yahan se nahi dikh raha kya problem ho raha hai to udhar baith jao fir dikh raha hai pakka agar problem ho raha hai to wahan baith sakte ho ha shift ho jao thoda sa nahi usko backrest chahiye theek hai so by default what are we getting over here just see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So by default, all the values 1 to 12, 1 to 12 is arranged, is arranged column wise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. By default, it's arranged row wise, uh, column wise. If I want to arrange this row wise, then how will I write? What will I write? I will just write by row, by row. By row true meaning it will be arranged row wise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? So when I run this, see, it's arranged row wise. It's arranged row wise. Clear? 
clear now what if i write something like this what am i what am i doing here is that i am taking and let me write n colon as 4 i am taking 11 values but in my r in my matrix i want 3 into 12 3 into 4 12 values so what will happen if i have less number of elements than we need for constructing a matrix what will happen in such a case you will your answer see your answer is getting executed your code is getting executed but you are getting a warning message the warning states that the data length is 11 which is not a sub multiple or a multiple of number of rows 3 so the number of elements that you write over here in the data set which you are putting in should be a multiple of the number of rows if it's not a multiple although you will get the answer but you will also get a warning message along with it and so it is recycling see one is repeated again so it has recycled the smaller vector clear clear now what if this is recycling of the smaller vector now what if instead of this i have matrix 1 to 12 साइलेंट करो फोन नंबर ऑफ रोज इज थ्री एंड नंबर ऑफ कॉलम्स लेट मी पुट इट एज फाइव फाइव इंटू थ्री इज फिफ्टीन सो आई शुड हैव यूज फिफ्टीन एलिमेंट्स बट आई ओनली हैव हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स ट्वेल्व एलिमेंट्स नो अगेन इट विल रीसाइकल लेट मी जस्ट रन दिस सी ऑल दो योर आंसर इज रनिंग योर कोड इज रनिंग बट स्टिल यू आर गेटिंग अ वॉर्निंग मैसेज यू आर गेटिंग अ वॉर्निंग मैसेज सो वाई वॉट आर वी गेटिंग वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व One, two, three. Again, it is repeating. Clear? So basically, when you have twelve values, you're getting a warning message because the when when actually R is recycling all the data, the recycling is not completed because it is stopping at three. If my recycle gets completed, for example, if I write. Number of columns as eight. Eight into three, twenty-four, which is exactly double of twelve. So when I run this, you are not getting any error, and the vector one to twelve is getting completely recycled. So when the smaller vector gets completely recycled, you will never get the warning message. You will only get the warning message when the smaller uh, data set or the smaller vector is not completely recycled. Is this clear to everyone? Clear? Any doubt? I hope it's clear to all of you. All right. Now let me do one thing. So. we had created mat 1 right we had created mat 1 but here just analyze one thing very carefully here we have box comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 when we used to write a vector when we used to write a vector maybe v right and i just run this here we are getting 1 this box basically represents indexation remember indexation we used to do v 3 so this is basically indexation these brackets are indexation so here what does this indexation represents this actually represents before since it is a two dimensional object since it's a two dimensional object this comma before comma we have we write number of rows and after comma we write number of column so we'll come to indexation later on but you have to just understand why are we getting these particular values we'll come to this later on just to give you a heads up that why are we getting these boxes right so now what if instead of these numbers just randomly i want proper labeled columns and labeled rows so how we can label it let's create a new uh, matrix mat4 let's create a new matrix mat4 b number of rows will be 3 the 
if you are not mentioning number of columns if you are straight away just mentioning number of rows by default number of columns will be the elements divided by number of rows so 12 divided by 3 4 clear so number of columns will be by default taken as 4 clear clear all right so number of rows is there then the another argument that we pass over here is dim names dim names now within dim names we create a list what is a list we will come to list later on after data frames so we create a list list is again an object in, a, uh, in our, our programming just like vectors factors matrices data frames list is also an object so what do we write is within the list we give two vectors within the list function we will give two vectors the first vector will be all the row names which I want to give so basically suppose I want to give the row name as R1 just I'm taking it very simple R2 and R3 so these are the row names which I want to give then then I will write all the column names again in a form of a vector so C1 because these are names, so it has to be within quotes. These are character strings, so it has to be within quotes. C2 and C3. Also C4 because there are four columns. Right? Right? So what basically dim names is the argument. List is the function that we are using. Within that we are writing two, two vectors. Now when I run this, at 4, R1, R2, R3, C1, C2, C3. Here, you all can compare this with mat1. List is basically, uh, it can combine two vectors, two data frames. It's a object which can combine multiple objects together. So we'll talk about list later on, right? When we complete data frame. For the timing, you just have to understand one thing that within list object, you can write different objects together. You can have matrices and vectors together. You can have, when we'll do data frames, you can have data frames, vectors together, anything. No, you couldn't have done without will have to write list all right so now suppose if I am just using the same function now if I instead of writing c1 c2 c3 I forget to write I forget to rename the fourth column and I just run this let's see so we'll straight away get our error saying that the length of dim names is not equal to the array Meaning that this length and they are giving us dim names 2. Basically, this is dim names 1, this is dim names 2. Because there are two elements in the list, right? Two elements, why? Because first element is this vector, second element is this vector. So they are saying that the dim names 2, this is not of the same length as the array. Because this array is of 4, length is of 4, but we are just giving 3 values. So we are getting a error. We are getting a error. Clear? <clears throat> Clear? Now this is one way of renaming. The other way of renaming your matrix. So this is mat1. This is mat1. So dim names is one way of renaming your rows and columns. What is the other way of renaming? The other way of renaming is using the function poll names and row names. Poll names and row names. So within poll names, you give, so call names is a function. Within call names, you give the, you give the matrix, which you want to rename, which is mat1. Right, mat1. And then, you can again write whatever column names you want to use. So see, my mat1 is currently like this. It is not renamed. So now, I am just putting in all the values. 
oh sorry row names row names this will be row names and then we have the colon And now when I run my mat1, we'll get all the values. So two ways of renaming, either you can use the cold names, row names function or you can use dim names as an argument within the function matrix. Within the function matrix. It's clear? Please complete it till here. All right. Now there are few basic functions that we can perform on matrices. Basic functions. What are these basic functions that we can perform? So uh, we can find out is dot matrix whether it is matrix or not mat one. It will give us true obviously. We can also find out the class of mat1 which will give us matrix. We are also getting an array. What is an array? An array is group of cells which has certain rows and certain columns. So matrix is an array, right? We can find out the number of rows in our matrix which is 3. We can find out number of columns is 4 right then directly if you want you can write dim which is dimensions short form for dimensions so it directly gives you the dimensions 3 and 4 3 for the rows or for the column. So always in R we write the row numbers first and the column numbers next. Always it's a general convention that we follow. You can also check the structure. You can also check the structure of matrix. So the structure, just look at the structure. The structure is, it's an integer vector, uh, integer matrix. There are 1, 2, 3 rows, 4 columns. These are the values <coughs> and then the attribute which is dim names, it's a list of two. These are the row, na these are the row names and these are the column names. For example, I have a matrix. For example, let me create a new matrix over here. Mat2 matrix B, 3 right? Now if I check the structure of matrix 2, this is a matrix without any row names and columns names. So you will just get the first line which is integer, 3 rows, 4 columns and these many values. Clear? You can also find the dimension names just like how many dimensions there are number of dimensions, we can also find the name of the columns and the row names. So we can write dim names, dim names mat1. So here it will give me, this is how, if you just see please, this is how a list is represented. We'll talk about this later on. This is how a basic list is represented. We have the first element of the list, which is a vector. This is the second element of the list which is again a vector. You can have a vector, matrix, data frame, everything in one list which 
to it later on. So here there are two elements in our list. First element is a vector, second element is also a vector. And these are the row names and the column names. Here, similar to matrix function, suppose I have this vector v. I want to convert this vector into a matrix. So we can write the function as dot matrix. We can write the function as dot matrix. By default, see, by default, we are getting how many rows? And how many columns? One. So by default, your number of rows will, number of columns will be one. And number of rows will be the number of rows which are mentioned in your, uh, which uh, number of elements as your number of elements, right? You can just write it down, number of rows, number of <coughs> Clear? Now, now the other thing which we can do, Sahil, you joined very late, so I will not repeat. You have joined just now. What do you want me to repeat? Everything from the very start. Alright, so now the next thing that we learn is coercing. Coercing to same data type. From next time, I will not let anyone enter after the class. After the class starts, you have to be on time. So coercing same data type. Is this clear to everyone? First, just write a yes in the chat box. Others, those who are attending, please write a yes. Then only I will move to the next section. Just write a yes. Very good. Thank you. So now what are we saying? What are we talking about the matrix matrices? So it has two dimensions, rows, columns. The other thing is same as that of vectors that it contains only same data type. So what if again, if you all remember when we were doing vectors, when we were mixing numbers and characters together, we were just getting what? Characters, correct. Number plus logical, true, false, number. Very good. So here also we get the same thing happens. For example, let me take a vector. Let me take a vector V1. And I'll take, maybe let me take a few characters first. And let me take a few numbers as well. So we have V. See, all are converted to Character. Now if I create a matrix. Now if I create a matrix. V1. And let me give the number of rows. It's 2. Oh. V. Right. So I have number of rows is 2. I have number of rows is 2. And see all are converted to what? You can also check the data type. As by writing the function type of. Let me keep this in mat 5. Type of mat 5. Character. Here is dot numeric will give me false. Is dot character will give me let me check the structure as well. See it says instead of integer it says it's a character. It's a character.
you could have directly also written without creating a vector we can directly write a few numbers over here so instead of writing vectors over here we can straight away write the vector within the data right it's the same thing either you can write the name of the object which you have created or you can straight away write the vector right another way let's learn another way of creating matrices is it clear till here coercing to the same data type just like vectors we can coerce it to the same data type either all of it will be numeric or all of it will be character now the next thing that we have over here is using r bind and c bind you can create you can create these matrices using r bind and c bind so we have mat5 with us three columns Two. Okay, sure, sure. Copy it down, please, all of you. because mat5 is a character matrix see it's a character everything is in the form of a character we have codes right that is why done vansh just once completed till here
So now we'll use R bind and C bind to create matrices. So for example, here we have mat5, right? Um, let me take new, uh, let me create two new vectors, R4. R5 Let me take this as wait let me take this as R3 and R4 All right okay. 5 and 6 Here so basically I have these three things Now I'll be using R bind. R bind basically means row bind. So it binds all the rows together. You can bind two or more matrices together. You can bind two or more vectors together. You can bind matrices and vectors together. Right? So I will write mat5, comma, R3, comma, R4. So what are we getting over here? What are we getting over here? Two rows with from the earlier matrix and two new rows which we have binded using R bind. Correct, correct. Or we can use, let me use here. We can also create, so let me put this in M. Let me put this in M. We can also create matrix of matrices. We can also create matrix of matrices. So I will write R bind. Let me show you all two things first. Here we have mat1. And we have mat2. Let me just take mat1 and find mat2. So I basically want to create a matrix of these two matrices, mat1 and mat2. So I will write R bind mat1, comma, mat2. So first we've got mat1. And then we've got mat2. Okay. This is mat1. And then this is mat2. <coughs> now what if we have, suppose I have R1. Suppose I have R3. With three elements, I create R4 or R5. 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have four elements in R5. And I use R bind along with this. R3, comma, R5. So basically this is three elements. This has three elements. So three, row, three columns, one row. Here we have four columns, one row, and we bind when we bind these two together. So what should we get? So what what are we getting? Just see one, two, three, and again this is being recycled, and four, five, six, seven. Why? Because here we had just three columns, and here we had four columns. So the shorter vector is getting recycled, and what are we getting? A warning. That the number of columns of result is not a multiple of the vector. First vector basically. So it actually recycles your smaller. It recycles your smaller vector. Right? Now what if I have, now what if I have, let me write R6 
and let me put eight elements in R6. So in R5, I have four elements and I use R bind again. R5, R6. Here, here in R5, I had just four elements. In R6, I had eight elements. So it is completely getting recycled. You are not getting any warning. You are not getting any warning. It's completely getting recycled. Similar to R bind, we also have C bind. We also have C bind. So let me write to um, So this was mat 1. Let me create C5. 13, 15 and 15. E6. C bind. At one comma five commas. So we have three rows, six columns. So basically this was my this entire thing. This entire thing was my mat one. Along with mat one. So this entire thing was my mat one. Along with mat one, I've binded two new columns. Here. So even in this, we have this recycling thing. For example, if I have C5 as 9 comma 9 and when I C bind Mat one and C five. What happens? This thing gets recycled again because this has three rows. It has three rows, right? Mat one had three rows. Here we just have two elements. So it again gets recycled and we get a warning. And we again get a. Now what if? What if here? I had, yes. Okay. So here, what if I have six elements? So we have just three rows. But So this is my mat one. This entire portion is my mat one. And now I will try to see pine. So here, what it does is that it just takes the first three elements and it will not take the next three elements. It will delete. How will it recycle? How will it recycle? If it, if it has to recycle, it has to create a new row or a new column, which it cannot do. If it creates a new row, your entire purpose will change because your purpose was to just add new columns. C bind means you have to just add new columns. You cannot increase the number of rows. And you even you cannot add new columns because there there is only just one column which I want to add. So it will simply delete the other three. It will not take these other three nine. It will just take the first three nine. Ha! Huh, you will not get an error. Warning. Ha! Huh, warning. Just a warning. The warning. And it will not take the first because it considers that if you are creating. If you are using R bind or C bind, you might have something in your mind, right? You might just want to take three uh, elements, right? That is why you are getting such an answer. Is this clear? Here, now we'll move to indexation. So here I have mat 1. I also have mat 4. Similar. I have mat 5. So now we'll be using indexation 
similar to what we have done in our vectors now in the vectors we just had one row and many columns so we just wrote suppose v and we gave the just the value which yes mm -hmm. no how can you use r bind and c bind together these are two different functions so you cannot use r bind and c bind together cannot do c bind and r bind together r bind is basically binding your rows together c bind is bind binding your columns together for example most of the times you will see that you have uh, for example i have taken a data set for five students i have their name age gender and the marks they have scored now another student comes in and gives me the same input name age gender and the marks so i i will just use the original data original matrix which i had here we'll be using data frame actually which we'll talk about in our next class so whatever i have already and i will just use r bind and fit in the new row that we have right so that is what we do and you cannot use r bind and c bind because it will not make any sense and for example why when do we use a c bind for example i have a data with name age and gender of a particular students now i have also taken marks of these particular students so i will include new column using c bind so that is when you use c bind and that is when you use r bind given generally it's logical right you will have the when you are using r bind you will just simply bind a particular row which will have the same number of rows or uh, columns which will already have the same number of columns and if you're using a r bind you will have if you're using a c bind you will have same number of rows then only you are binding the column clear is this clear all right is this clear vansh right so next move to indexation so here indexation was all about uh, v7 we just give the element number that we want to extract now here in matrix since it's but it, since we have all the rows and columns so here we have different rows different columns if i want to extract a particular value i have to first give the row number and the column number suppose i want to extract this value so i will give the row number 2 and the column number 2 so first we give the row number and then we give the column number 5 for example you can also if you want to take out this value if you want to take out this value row is 2 column is 4 comma at 1 here here now for example i want to extract just see mat 4 just see mat 4 if i want to extract all the values from the second row all the values from the second row so i will write mat 4 this mat 5 actually mat 5 all the rows so for all the rows i will keep a space or just leave nothing just write comma and write i want all the I want this right so this means all columns all columns all columns all columns and second row so for all columns i will write firstly second second row and all columns for all columns i will just write blank nothing i will not mention anything else so second row all columns when i run this i will be able to extract second row all column similarly similarly if i want to extract the third row or maybe second row second column and all rows second column and all rows so this will give me second column all row all rows second column clear clear that is why we have this representation of this means all rows second column all rows third column all rows first column first row all columns 
सेकेंड रो ऑल कॉल प्योर प्योर वी कैन ऑल्सो टेक आउट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई हैव अगेन मैट फोर सो इन मैट फोर आई वॉन्ट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट लेट मी सी दिस सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट एट इलेवन नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व सो आई वॉन्ट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट वैल्यूज फ्रॉम माई सेकेंड एंड थर्ड रो थर्ड एंड फोर्थ कॉलम सो आई विल राइट सी सेकेंड एंड थर्ड रोज third and fourth column third and fourth column second and third 8 11 9 12 let me run this clear we can do that i'll show you is this understood is this understood right so we will take out second third row third and fourth column here we can use colon also 3 uh, 2 colon 3 3 colon 4 it will give you the same answer provided it has to be continuous right it has to be continuous you can also do this mat 4 for example i want i want all i want everything except the second row except the second row so all rows except the second row minus 2 all columns clear if you want to remove see it is very logical you will never want to do that why will i remove if you want to do that if you want to you will have to use suppose i want to replace this this with zero for example so i can do this instead of extracting it for example here we have mat 1 in this i want to replace this particular 8 with 0 for example so what i will do is mat 1 this is second row third column right this is giving me 8 so here i can write replace this with 0 and then when i run mat 1 we have a 0 this you can do but why will you want to just remove that and extract everything nahi it's a logical and that we cannot do also and it's a logical clear are you getting me so this is very this is actually important when you want to replace a certain part of your entire matrix now as she was saying that as these rows are renamed already so can we use these names directly yes you can use these names directly mat1 i can write r1 and all columns so this will give me r1 and all columns you can write mat1 r1 and for example i want the first two columns only so i will write t1 clear since it's renamed you can use the name suppose we have a particular you know data set wherein we have english marks math marks uh evs something like that so i want just maybe math marks so i can write all rows comma math so it will give me the math column quotes obviously we can also do one very interesting thing over here so i can write mat1 suppose i want all those values which are greater than 7 so what will i do over here i will write mat1 
all those values which are greater than 7. So it will extract, this will extract it as a vector. See, I am getting it in the form of a vector, all those values which are greater than 7. I am getting it in the form of a vector. You can also do something like this. All the numbers which are greater than or equal to 7 and less than or equal to 11. Right? We can do this as well. Now we can also perform mathematical functions or arithmetic operators on our matrix. So this is the last topic for today. We can use arithmetic Then you will get an error. If you do this on a character data type, you will Ha but that's illogical, no? That's illogical. Because ABC it is considered as uh, something which is greater than a particular length, a particular number. It's greater than any number. You put any number, you will get ABC. Things, see, you can do anything. But will you do that? Will it have any meaning? No. Why will we do any illogical operations in R? No, no point in doing that, right? You can perform many things in R, but these are illogical. This should contain some meaning. Then only we should do it. Otherwise, why will we do that? Okay, so now we can actually carry out some matrix arithmetic operations with R. Again, arithmetic operations will obviously be done with numeric matrices. We cannot do it with character type matrices. We, although you might get certain answers, but these are illogical, right? We, can, we cannot do that. We should not do that. So here, for example, um, let's start with scalar operations. Scalar operations. We have mat 1. Let me write mat 1 plus 5. So what it will do is it will add 5 to all the values. It will add 5 to all the values. And how is it adding 5 to all the values? Element wise. It adds 5 to all the elements. It adds 5 to all the elements. For example, now if we have, let, like she was saying, we have mat 4, I think. No, mat 2, mat 5. Mat 5. So we have mat 5 over here. It's a character type matrix. So if I write mat 5 plus 5, non numeric argument to be binary operator. So it has to be a Numeric, you cannot add anything to a character type data. Now here if I have, see, mat5, mat5 has two rows, three columns. Mat2 has three rows and four columns. So if I do this, mat1 plus mat5, again you will get an error saying that these are all, these are not of, alright, let me do one thing. Okay, let me create, achha, let me first show you all. So this is mat 1, right? And this is mat 2. Right? Mat 1, mat 2. If I add these two together, so basically what it will do is it will add all the elements. 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 4 plus 4. So it adds element wise. See? Right? Correct? Now if I have mat, let me create a new matrix. Mat 3.
number of rows let me take number of rows as So I have mat three, two rows, four columns. Mat one has three rows, four columns. So now if I add mat one plus mat three, this will give me non-conformable, not conformable arrays. Basically, it is not of same dimensions. Not of same dimensions. If it's a, it's not of same dimensions, how can you add the elements? Here it was straight away adding 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3. But here it's not of same dimension. You cannot do these operations. Clear? Clear till here. Simple. You can perform uh, minus. You can do addition. You can do division. You can do multiplication. Anything. Of two or more matrices. Or you can do scalar operations. Basically. Uh, some matrices and a number, right? That also you can do. That what we have. That's what we have done over here. Scalar operations. These are matrix operations. Now again, let us quickly go through just two, three uh, new functions. Suppose I have matrix one over here, mat one. I want to take out row sums individually. I want to take out row sums for these particular uh, mat uh, matrix. So I'll write row sum. Make sure you use a capital S, row sums, row sums mat 1. So see it will give me row wise sums of matrix 1. We have coal sums mat 1, column wise sum, column wise summation, we have column wise summation here. We can also take out row means. We can also take out row means. So this is basically. So this is basically mean of all the rows. First row, second row, third row. Now, just three lines of code. Now, if I am writing. Now, if I am writing mat one multiplied by mat five. So what is this uh, mat 5? Let me write mat 4. So what is this doing is that it is it is element wise multiplying both the matrices. See? Mat 1, mat 2. So 1 into 1, 1. 2 into 2, 4. 3 multiplied by 3, 9. 4 into 4, 16 and so on. So it is, it is element wise multiplying all the values, right? Like what we did in addition. So it is element wise multiplying. Now there is something called as matrix multiplication. If you all remember. What is matrix multiplication? Multiplying the first row. First column. Then this col this row. Sorry. Multiplying the first row. And the first column. So basically it's 1 into 1. Plus 2 into 4. And so on. Right. And also what, what we have to see that R into C. This is row into column. So how many rows are there? Three rows, four columns. And here we have three rows and so when we perform matrix multiplication, the very first thing is it can only be performed with Correct. Rows in uh, columns in the first matrix should be equal to rows in the second matrix. So if this is <clears throat> if this is three cross four and this is three cross four, can you perform matrix multiplication on these two? No. You cannot do that. So let me quickly create mat seven and I'll write matrix B, comma, number of rows I will take as four. B mat seven. Right, so we have four rows, three columns. So now can we multiply mat 1 with mat 7? Uh, matrix multiplication. For matrix multiplication, for matrix multiplication, we use 
mat one percentage star percentage mat seven. This is the symbol or operator for matrix multiplication. What is matrix multiplication? First, first row, first column. So one into one plus four into two plus seven into three and so on. That is what a matrix multiplication is, right? So now when I run this, you will get matrix multiplication. So basically in matrix multiplication R1 cross C1 and how do you get the answer? To get the answer in the form of R1 cross So here we are getting three rows and three columns. Because this is three and this is also three. Clear? For matrices, we also do something called as transposing. What is transposing? You can transpose the rows and columns. So if these are the row, these are the columns, these will become the rows. So let me see. so you can just write for transpose. For transpose, you just have to use, you just have to write T and within brackets you will write, let us suppose mat1. So see, it will transpose, it transposed the rows in the columns. You are getting R1, R2, R3. It transposed the here. Now, just a last, small last topic for a square matrix, for a square matrix, this is the last topic for today, square matrix, so for a square matrix, what we do is, we can use, we can, we calculate something called as determinant, you all remember, we call some, we calculate something called as determinant, what is a determinant? 1 by 1 by 1. That is inverse. So, so we have a this is a square matrix. What is a square matrix? A square matrix is always has equal number of rows and columns, right? So here I have created a 2 cross 2 square matrix, very small. We can actually calculate determinant using just let function. And this gives us uh, the matrix. Uh, this gives us the determinant. For a 2 cross 2, it is 4 into 1 minus 2 into 3. So 4 into 1, 4 minus 6 minus 2. For a 2 cross 2. For a 3 cross 3, you have to actually just, uh, you know, it's an equation that you have to solve. Right? Now, you can also, you can also take out, you can also, you can also take out inverse of a square matrix. So, you can do that using solve function. This is the inverse of the Square matrix. Now you can only take out determinant or an inverse of always a square matrix. You cannot do it for a matrix which is not a square matrix. If you calculate, if you do solve mat1, you will get an error. Error because it must be a square matrix. It's an inverse, inverse. 1 by det a, a joint of a. So those who do not remember what was determinant, what was inverse, just leave it till here. No problem. I am not here to teach you all the formulas of theory. That is what you are supposed to know. If you don't remember, no problem. Just leave it till here. Those, this is for those who remember how we calculated determinant and inverse. 
uh, you can do this directly in R, right? Using the functions, you can transpose using T. You don't need a square matrix for this, obviously. You can perform matrix multiplication provided your these two should be equal, and you can do determinant. You can find out determinant and you can find out inverse. So these are some basic functionalities which we for matrices. Clear. So for today we'll do it till here. Then we'll start. Then we'll start with data frames, which is very interesting and something which we will actually, we, which we actually use in real life a lot. And then we'll be covering lists and some other topics. All right. Anything else? Any doubt? All right. Thank you.